Street at Broad Run occupies what once was a quiet and scenic farm, but now also features a 15-barrel brew house, which is nestled within the sprawling farmland. The brew house features over 12 beers year-round with staple beers as well as seasonal offerings. The grounds feature a pavilion with an outdoor bar area, a lake, a petting zoo, and plenty of outdoor scene adding to the ambiance of the brewery. Inside the brew house, there's plenty of seating available along with merchandise to purchase, including eggs produced by the chickens on property. Food options include rotating food trucks as well as options provided by the brewery. Farm Brewery gets some creative inspiration from their own crops, which include blueberries, rows of cascade hops, raspberries, and more. So without further ado, on to the brew review. Hey guys, Andy and Sandra back again with another brew review. This time we are at the Farm Brewery at Broad Run. We have to give a big thank you to Melissa, who kindly allowed us to come out and shoot today. We definitely appreciate the hospitality. Speaking of hospitality, let's talk a little bit about the place itself. Uh, the farm brewery is situated on a huge swath of land. This place has trees and flowers and gardens and just waterfalls absolutely everywhere. They have um, a petting zoo over that direction that has goat, it has chickens, they sell chicken eggs here that you can buy. This direction, there's a hop farm. Yeah, there's a lot of um, space here for picnics and family outings, and they're also dog friendly. You might hear some kids in the background. That's because, well, there's a bunch of kids here today. Very family friendly. All right, well, we've got two flights uh, today. Our first flight, we're gonna start with uh, the Broad Run Blonde which is a 4.9% blonde ale. This is all from their core lineup, so they have these all year round. It's slightly bubblegummy. I'm getting a bit more of a lager-ish beer versus mm. a blonde. Um, yeah. But it's tasty. I'm not sure if this is uh, actually fits Getting some fits corn the... in there. Definitely a very good beer. I can see why this is their number one selling beer. The manager told us this is the first beer that they made here. What rating do you want to give this one? I think I'll give it a three. Yeah, um, I think I'm going with a three and a half on that one. It's not, I don't think it's like exactly to the style that I was expecting, but the Blonde Ale, it's a little bit more uh, lagery. Same thing, I think it's a bit more on the lager side, um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't, it tastes bad, it tastes good, it's, it's just. Good. We're being, uh, I guess, a little nitpicky when it comes <laughs> to the styles here. Yeah. This one is the Pale Ale. Pavilion Pale Ale at 5.6%. So I'll start this one. Yeah. That's um, hoppy. That smells like hops right out the gate. Definitely one of those hoppier pale ales. It's not IPA hoppy, but it definitely lingers a bit on the back of your throat. Mm -hmm. Which is the, typically the kind of pale ales that I like better versus the ones that are smoother. That's the malt, good though. The malt is really good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good though. And with the pale ale, I think I'm going to give it four. Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree. I think a four is a good place to be with this one. The hop in there lingers and it stays there for a while. Definitely a present hop taste yeah. in that one. Let's do this tangerine IPA. So I found it weird that a tangerine IPA is part of this business's core four. It seems like more of a seasonal type of a beer. I like tangerines and I like IPAs, so I'm for it. I feel like this is a good choice. My turn, my turn. So if you notice, it's also a bit hazy. Maybe it's just slightly unfiltered or we just got beer towards the bottom. It's, I'm I don't not, taste a ton of tangerine Yeah, I'm not getting any tangerine in there. I'm just getting. And this is just speculation, but maybe they brewed this with tangerine peels instead of like actual tangerines, of course. But the hop profile definitely takes over this one a little bit too yeah. much, I think. So this one's definitely on the bitter side. That's the other thing I was just gonna say. Wait, all these are very clean. Have you noticed that? They are. Like they taste really fresh. And that might be because 
We're on a farm. Pop rating on this guy. Tangerine IPA? Um, I'm gonna go with the four. It's a good IPA for sure. I'm gonna have to give it just a three. I don't taste any of the tangerine and I was, I was expecting to taste the tangerine because it says tangerine, says in tangerine it. IPA. Yeah. Um, so guy. this one, the last one of the core four That's is dark. called the Broad Run Brunette and it's actually 5.6% um, and the manager mentioned it was a short spear but it's actually technically a brown ale. I'm going to have to say for a brown ale, it's a bit on the darker side. That is dark. It's pretty dark. Let's check it out. So this looks more like a short spear. It smells like one too. And it tastes It tastes like more one. like a short, <laughs> short spear. Yeah. That tastes like a short spear to me. Curious. I like that. I like I it. I like the maltiness in it. Ah, something flew in it. Um, it definitely smells, tastes, looks like a yeah, short no. spear. I would call that a short spear. Yeah, I'm gonna firmly ale. put that in a short spear category. So but now, as a short spear. So yeah, okay. So we'll review it as kind of what it is, I suppose. Um, as a short beer, it's a good beer. Yeah, I like it. There's a nice roastiness to it. I'm gonna have to give that one a. Uh, I'm gonna give it a three and a half because I'm not sure what it is exactly. I I agree. I think uh, a three and a half. It reminds me of the Devil's Backbone Schwartz beer. Yeah. The Black Lager. It's a little bit lighter Dan's though. Danzig or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, I think they have a solid core four lineup here. They have pretty much everything for everybody's acquired tastes. Okay, well, we got uh, four new beers now. Yeah. And these are, so these are all the seasonals? Well, these are um, just, I guess you can say manager's choice. There are two wits on here, one Hefeweizen and one Cherodactyl, which I think it's a Belgian fruit beer. All right, so let's start with the Cherodactyl. I like the name. Right up front, I'm smelling that cherry. Yeah. It has an intense cherry flavor to it. Oh yeah. It's reminiscent of like a Belgian, Belgian inspired beer. I don't think it's like, super traditional Belgian, but it's definitely, the cherry is there, but it's not like, you know, maraschino cherry or imitation cherry or Robitussin cherry. It's it's like a natural cherry. It's just cherry. But it's, it's kind of vague, so it just kind of disappears, you know? It doesn't give you a sweet feel. It's not overpowering. I actually really like that one. Yeah, that's 4.9%. So that's- I uh, could drink that pretty that much all That definitely doesn't taste like a 4.9% beer. Mm. I'm gonna go out on a limb and give this one a four and a half. I like that a lot. Yeah, I like that too. Um, I'll give it a 4.25. Yeah, I like that. It's a good beer. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, DeWitt's Blueberry Wit. I'm excited for that. I can see the slight layer of like film of color just that comes out of the natural juices in the berry. That to me tells me that they actually spent their time and created some wonderful blueberry mash in order to put into this beer. This smells like a blueberry scone would taste. All right. <laughs> you really want to taste that? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Doesn't it smell like a scone or like breakfast, like a muffin? Yeah, that smells fantastic. Yeah. I'm not getting a lot in the taste though. Yeah. Or as much as the smell would have or yeah, would lead you to Yeah, the smell's quite overpowering in a good way but then I'm not getting any of the sweetness at all. I like that a lot. Like you should put blueberries in wheat beer. Yeah. It's just delicious. Especially in the summertime, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's refreshing, it's light. This one gets like my it. top hop rating of five hops. I'll give it a four. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I'll give it a four. So this is the same beer, just with raspberry in it. Yeah. So this is the DeWitt's Raspberry Wit. All right, you go first on that one. Yeah. Color's definitely good. I'm not getting raspberry on oddly it's almost yeah, like yeah i don't get any raspberry at all huh. 
see, this one I didn't get any of the raspberry. This is the opposite. The complete opposite, <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. This that has a weird. lot of raspberry when you try it. The raspberry is nice, it's prominent, but then when you smell it, there's no raspberry smell. But then this one is super blueberry. When on you the smell nose. It, on the nose. But then, but then in the mouth, it, now, here's my thing. I wish the blueberry wit was as pungently flavored as that, as the raspberry one. I'm gonna give that one a four. I'm gonna give this a four and a half. So we're, we're kind of at the opposite ends of the spectrum on, on these two. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed the, uh, the raspberry wit more than the blueberry. It's refreshing, it's light, but there's a lot of flavor in there so you don't get bored of the beer. All right, on to the next one. This is the Heifer, Heiferweizen. That's what they call it. The he Heifer, Heiferweizen. Heiferweizen. Mm, 4.9%, just a regular Heiferweizen, I guess. In supposed to be. Okay, yeah, I'm getting that coriander. I'm getting a little bit of cloves in there. Some of those esters are coming through. Yes, yeah, some banana is definitely present mm -hmm. in there. It's got all the uh, the trademarks of a Hefeweizen. I was expecting it to be a slightly more spicier with the clove and the coriander, um, but it's not. My opinion, I don't like the way the clove overpowers. I like this a lot better because it's, it's there, but it's not too in your face. It's like a really smooth Hefeweizen. Yeah. The flavors all blend together perfectly. I prefer my beer a little spicier than that. All right, so what is your rating on this one? What do you think? I'll give it a four. I think it is. Uh, this is the, the best done Hefeweizen that I've had in a very long time, and I, I've got to give it credit for that. Okay, so overall brewery rating. The building is really nice, as you can see. Yeah. Um, the grounds are gorgeous. They're beautiful. I, mean, I think overall this they've got place, good spaces for yeah. good spaces for you know mingling there's so much land here that you can always find a space by yourself outside they have two bars one inside and one outside which is nice they also serve wine so that's another plus if you're with a beer drinker that wants to come out here yeah. and you yourself drink wine or vice versa then that's always an option too but I can see the machine from here and it just keeps churning and it looks delicious, whatever's in that. That's a great idea and I'm glad that they have it. Not a lot of breweries do that. I've only been to like one other brewery that does it in this kind of area. They also seem like they have really good food too on yeah. top of everything else. They've got a popcorn machine inside. When you go in, it just smells like movie theater popcorn. They've got pretzels. They've got a food truck normally. They do like hot dogs and pizza inside. Yeah. But they do have a food truck outside as well, so you know your food options, you, you have plenty of food options. Yeah, I don't feel limited here. No. Overall, I would say that this place is definitely a strong five. It's yeah. got all the amenities you could even ask for. Strong five. All right, guys, well, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and also hit that bell button to make sure you get notified when new videos come out. Thanks for tuning in, and stay crafty. We're on to the next one. Cheers. Cheers.